Okay. Welcome, everybody, live from the night hacking stage at Javaland Conference in Germany. Thanks for joining us. We have a live audience here. Hi, everybody. Hello. So we're starting out this session um, coming over from the early adopter area. We have some Java E experts telling us what's new and hot. Uh, so we're going to give you a little teaser here on the night hacking stage. And then we're going to be moving over to the early adopter area with the tables and the boards so we can get a more interactive discussion going. So that's over to my right. But to get started, um, we're going to introduce our first expert who is Sebastian Daschner from Germany. Welcome Sebastian. Hi, hey everybody. All right. So you're going to tell us a little bit about the JSR 367J uh, Java API for JSON binding. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Exactly. What you've been doing? So um, can you switch? Uh, you want to, we want to see your screen. Yeah, we could see okay. the screen. We have so, a few slides for you guys. So yeah. Uh, wh what's new in Java E8? What will be included for JSON B? As yeah, JSON is a pretty hot topic right now. We have a JSON P API which uh, can create JSON objects programmatically uh, already, and this will also be included for JSON binding. The idea is for that uh, JSR to bind JSON objects to Sebastian. Uh, there's Java. no signal on your laptop. No. Oh, sorry. Your laptop's not connected. Yeah, that's. We are all live. That's why. This is live. This can hacking. happen. Does it work? Okay, around? there you go. All right, so let's go to this one again. Now we see the slides. So the idea is to bind Java objects to JSON. Um, in a POJO um, mapping way, so this means what J uh, JSON B uh, is for JSON, what JAX B is for XML. So you get the idea. This is uh, what JAX B is about, just only for JSON. It's driven by annotations, and it will map POJOs, Java objects, to JSON. Um, and out of the box, it supports several types, all of the Java primitive types, okay. strings. Uh, further types which can be u uh, which are useful like your eyes just like JAXB, you get you get the idea big uh, numbers like big integers big decimals will be included the new j uh, java 8 features optionals will be included as well so um, java 8 was also taken into account here um, the same is true for the dates so also the new date and time api is included these types can um, be mapped to json automatically out of the box without any adaptions mm -hmm. um, as well as collections enums and arrays and also this uh, jsonp api is included so these uh, objects okay. can just be used out of the box so it's pretty simple uh, to use actually um, i have a short uh, yeah code example here um, this is just a POJO with some annotations, and you get the idea. Just like Jax B uses this for XML, this uh, can be used here for JSON mapping. So you, we can have a transient object, which will not be uh, created in the output. We can rename the properties, just like Jax B. And for more complex examples, uh, you can use JSON B type adapters. This is somewhat similar to Jax B um, type adapters. You, you have more or less control over how to map specific uh, subtypes included in your POJOs to the JSON uh, output. So when the normal um, examples don't, are, are not sufficient, then you can use something like this. Yeah, this was a short teaser how, how to use it and what could be possible. The JSR is currently um, the, the early, um, sorry, early support is uh, already there. You can um, check out the first version, actually. And you can still yeah, take part in it. So you can, for instance, follow the, the mailing list. I've included the links here. Um, you can have a look at the JCP project page. Okay. If you're curious about it, just follow the mailing list. Have a look at the early draft. You can already read the document and provide feedback. So, so the experts are pretty happy if you just have a look at it, provide feedback, think wh wh what could be improved. Okay. And also uh, to mention, there is a project from Apache, Apache Johnson. This already includes some early support for that early draft version. So if you're really eager to, um, yeah, to, to try out the early version to, to get a look at it, first you can, you can use you this. 
you write it down. Yeah, thanks. Okay, Leah. Sebastian. Sebastian. All right, thanks for sharing. So, mm -hmm. um, like we said, the draft uh, spec is available on jcp.org. Exactly. And we're going to switch to another JSR now, but you're going to move this over to the early adopter area and people uh -huh. can take a look yeah, more hands-on. Yeah, you can, you can on join and us and give have a look feedback. at the... Give their feedback. Okay, why don't you take off the microphone, mm -hmm. turn it to mute. Okay. All right. So moving on to our next topic, I think we'll start uh, with Mark Struberg, who's sitting here next to me. And... Okay. Uh, so, Mark, hi. hi good Hold on, I got to get your mic for you. You gonna move? Are you gonna move? Or are you gonna stay there? You gonna yeah, move? You gonna show? The, okay. Okay. So, Mark is from Austria, not from Germany, as we've already discussed earlier today. Can you help me put this on him? So I know Mark's been active with several of the JSRs. What, which JSR are you going to tell us about today? Go ahead and tell us. Uh, my main topic is CDI, Context and Dependency Injection uh -huh. for Java. OK, um, so this is uh, JSR 365. 365, previously 299 and 346F. OK, so, so this is uh, CDI 2.0. Exactly. Right, working through the JCP, I think. What you've had a couple of early draft reviews already. Yeah, right? we had one early draft review last year, and we are still rethinking the features, and uh, they are still not yet finished because we like to get them out in a perfect way, not just delivering something, but something which is really usable in practice. Okay. So um, we pretty much will change a few features still um, because we get so much feedback, and the expert group is really, really active. We have tons of contributions. And uh, yeah, i just like to give an, a quick overview of what we like to deliver in CDI okay. 2.0, uh, asynchronous events. Mm -hmm. um, th that's basically what uh, EGP at asynchronous started in the Java Enterprise platform, but we take this one step further. Uh, the bootstrapping API, which is available through Delta Spike, but the, the CDI containers and the CDI spec currently doesn't provide a way to, to bootstrap a CDI container or a Java Enterprise container, and we will introduce this with Java with CDI 2.0. Uh, then the next point is um, aspect-oriented programming improvements like interceptors and decorators for producer methods and producer fields. We are currently thinking about uh, introducing even a proxy factory thing like Java Lang Reflect proxies for interfaces, but with subclass proxying mechanism. So even broader, you don't need any interfaces anymore, so you can proxy real classes uh, in the spec. But this is in, in an early stage of discussion right now, but this might be a way out um, the jungle of the interception for producer methods. Okay. Uh, another big step is uh, to split up the specification in a Java SE part and Java EE part because uh, JSR 299 or previously the WebBeans specification as it was originally named in 2008 started um, f pure for Java Enterprise but it's uh, actually it is, is much more than that. It's totally usable already in Java SE and uh, we'll make we will make this um, interfaces official now with CDO, CDI 2.0. Well, and of course, we will also support Java 8 features like lambdas um, and repeatable annotations and that stuff mm -hmm. in the future. Right. Um, the next thing is what do we like to improve? What do we like to work on? Uh, the CDI specification, like the JBatch and Beam validation specifications, are Apache licensed. No. Oh, yeah. Doesn't work. No. Didn't switch. No. So, oopsie. so this is the switch to my turn. The third one. Okay, this it was an overview. No, it's not. No, it's not of the features anymore. and um, <laughs> ready. A quick overview. And uh, what are the next steps? Uh, the CDI specification or the expert group is currently getting flooded with uh, new feature requests and uh, improvement requests because it's, it's re really easy to contribute to our expert group. And 
I think one of the core features will be to keep things out as bad as this, this sounds. But uh, things like A's and Coronas, the question is whether we handle this in CDI, mm -hmm. like a few people regard, or whether we revive the, the concurrency utils specification, which is uh, there is no maintenance uh, release in Java E8, but I, I think it should be done. Right, okay. There are lots so of discussions in this area where we, I'd rather like to keep CDI as a core dependence injection mechanisms uh, rather than to, to push in all those features which are neat and which are really useful and important to have, but they should go into specs where they belong to. All right, that makes sense, right? So you have to work together with the other spec leads to make that happen. We have to review all these, these areas. Right, okay. This will spread out. All the ideas we get in CDI 2.0 will spread out to other expert groups, okay. I feel. Well, it sounds like you have a lot to work on there, and I, I know Definitely. I've been working quite a bit with yeah. Antoine, and he's making great progress in really including the community and, yeah, and he's different doing a great job. Um, people who are, have a vested interest there. So we're going to be moving over mm -hmm. to the early adopter area and discuss exactly. this some more. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the, the mm -hmm. highlights of what you've been up to. Appreciate you catching me up. So we'll switch off now and move over to... Who's going next? Is it the MVC? MVC spec? MVC spec. Ivar? Okay. okay. Are we doing, uh, so we're going to have now Christian and Ivar together? Is that the plan? To talk about MVC, both of you? That you get really close together. We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna welcome Ivar and Christian, who are both on the MVC spec. That's JSR. Is it 370? 371. 371. I think, yep. 371. JSR yep. 371. MVC for Java, and we have a few slides here. So um, Christian and Ivar, you're both on the expert group for the MVC spec. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Are you turned on there? Okay. Can you? Okay. What? All right. Okay. Yep. Fun. Great to meet you. I'm glad yeah, to hear that you. you're getting involved in the JCP. That you've been yeah. a member for how long? I think about two years, perhaps. Member of the JCP yeah. for a couple of years, and exactly. had been following. Was it JSF? The JSF JSR mm -hmm. exactly, and then MVC when it came up. Mm -hmm. So when MVC came up, that really was your motivation to get more involved in the JCP and participate at a higher level. Uh, I think it was very interesting that this kind of new web framework, as a contrast to the uh, to the JSF, came up, and I, I think I was very fascinated by the the simplicity of the framework, and that was something that uh, I found very interesting, and I thought perhaps I could help out with uh, building the specification. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's great to hear. I always love to hear how people get involved in the JCP. So thanks for sharing. Now you're going to give us a little bit of a preview from your screen on some of the work that you've been doing in the expert group. Yeah, exactly. I think this JSR had an early draft review a few months ago, right, that was published yeah, on jcp.org? Actually, the second early draft review second is one. out. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Late uh, 2015. Okay. Well, I'm showing your screen now, so you yep. want to walk us through what you put together for us? Okay. Um, yeah, so actually, um, MVC is a very straightforward and simple framework compared to something like JSF, which is more a component-oriented framework. So actually, the processing model is very easy. There's a request coming in. It's um, matched against the controller. The controller executes some codes to prepare some, some kind of model and then selects a view to render. This is very simple compared to the complexity of, for example, the JSF lifecycle. That is a very fascinating idea. idea. Okay, and uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, MVC is built co completely on existing uh, JSRs, especially JAXRS, and others like CDI and uh, Beam validation. So um, a controller is basically a standard JAXRS resource with one special annotation on it, which is uh, add controller. And this marks this class as an MVC controller. So what, what you can do now is basically define methods here, standard JAXRS resource methods. And um, 
annotate them as usual with add get and add something like uh, add view to select a view to render. And now typically you have some data to present in the view. And that's very simple to do. You simply inject an instance of models and mm -hmm. then populate the model with the data you want to show. And that's basically all you have to do on the controller side. So really a very, very simple model. The pass is matched against this JAXRS controller. You pre prepare the model for rendering. And what you do now by um, using at view is select a view to render, which can be a standard JSP file or even a facelets file. And a classic view can look like this. This is a standard HTML5 document as a JSP file. And now you can use the standard expression language to assess okay. the values you, you set in the model. And that's basically all. That's all right. a basic processing model of this very simple and straightforward mm -hmm. um, web framework. And that's, I think that's very interesting for modern applications, especially uh, JavaScript heavy applications. And, mm -hmm. uh, and one thing that's very important to uh, note is that MVC isn't about to replace JSF or something like that. Basically, MVC is just a completely different model to implement web applications, which is more action-based in contrast to JSF, which is more component-based. So it's creating more choice for developers exactly, as an option, yeah. additional option, yeah, which exactly. is great. More okay. freedom, choice for the developers. So. Yeah, I think that's very important because we all have learned that there's no simple answer to the question which is the best web application framework. There are different approaches and there are pros and cons for every single mm -hmm. framework. And MVC um, is very simple, it's straightforward and that can be your preferred choice in certain scenarios. Okay, awesome. So you're going to be over in the early adopter area collecting more feedback and yep. continuing the conversation. So thanks for joining us and sharing with us what you've been up to and what's going on okay. with the MVC JSR. Okay. So let's see, are we going to, um, uh, this is where you can go and, and find out more. Exactly. Ozark and is the reference implementation project. Exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And perhaps um, one important note, we'll have a uh, session on MVC. You have a during session the, on MVC this week? During the uh, conference. Uh -huh. So if you're interested in this technology, join for the session. So that's we'll tomorrow? Tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock. 12 yeah. o'clock. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Ivar. You guys are going to move over now to the early adopter area. And we're going to um, talk to, are we going to talk to Roland next? All right. Sounds good. OK, Roland. Hi, Roland. Okay, which which JSR are you working on these days? I know you're not on. Just you can tell me. Okay. JSR three seventy three. So hi, Roland. So Thanks hi, for hi. joining okay. us. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> nice to see you again. Yes. Just yes. It's always a pleasure. So it's been a year yeah. since I yeah, saw yeah, you, yeah. right? So, yeah, I'm, I'm working on JSR 373, okay. which is in very early stage at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we still have, so first of all, yes. what, what's about? What is yeah, this exactly. JSR 373? Yeah. What is this? Uh, it's uh, supposed to be the successor of JSR 77. Okay. Which is, is this uh, a management API? Yeah, exactly. So this was... For those who don't know JSR yeah, by exactly. heart, what, yeah. there's over 300? Oh, you don't know it by heart. So. We're special, <laughs> yes. Okay. No, it's uh, JSR 77 was <coughs> it's old, quite, quite old and it has been already dropped, I think, at Java AE 6. And it's about providing management information in a structured way. Okay. So this is uh, the intention of JSR 77. Uh, however, uh, it needed some support by the renders and was not really picked up, probably. And then the idea is to have a successor which, is, uh, which moved all the, the idea of having a structured rate for accessing Java E entities uh, on a new level. And so the idea is born to, to expose all the information via REST API. Okay. So JSR 373 is all about providing management information over REST, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily connected to JMX. So it's uh, something independent. And uh, there's a, an early prototype, uh, proof of concept, but we still have no early draft, but we are still in the way of, of setting up things. And um, so everybody who wants to join us to have ideas mm -hmm. how, to, how to contribute, how to, how to structure all the information. For example, there's currently some discussion how to model data types like, like dates and so on. Okay. For exposing them over this management API. 
uh, everybody is invited to join our mailing uh, group. So it's a JSR. 373. Unfortunately, I don't have slides, but you find it very easily on the, okay. on, the, on, the, on, the on the web. And there's a, the mailing list, which is a, the usual thing, user group, expert group. Okay. And, and you can join yes, us there, and, and we, yeah. have, we have some, some, some dis early discussion. So it's not mu much I can show at the moment, but I, I only can invite you to join us. And if you're interested in having a standardized way for accessing Java e management information, this is the right place. All right. Well, okay. you know, um, so, I appreciate yeah. you just sharing that with us. Yeah, we, we just lost our power, but I think yeah. everyone who's here in the room can still hear us. Okay. So <laughs> we have, we have uh, you know, a few more minutes over yeah. in the early adopter yeah, exactly. I, over I, there. I, I, so get more particulars about what it is that you're looking for exactly. and what kind and of things the ideas, expert I'm, group is looking yep. for. Yeah? Okay. All right. Well, it's great to see you. Thanks for sharing. I think we have Thanks. one more expert to hear from, a spec lead, as it were, Anatole. Thanks for joining us. So, Anatole, how are you? You need to get your microphone on. Thank you. So we're uh, recording this, but the PC has died. Okay, all right. Okay. I can't, can I, hi, how are you? Oh, oh, thanks. You're quite fine. You're quite fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you again. So you've been going through some changes in your work life, switching over companies and... Uh, as it happens from time to time. Yes, that does tend to happen every once in a while. And so um, what are you up to these days? You, you were you're the spec lead for the JSR 354 money and currency API. So that's final. We got that finished. Yep. Final release in last mm. year, end of last year. Yeah. Yeah. No, end May. Well, Actually, it was May. Middle last of last year. year. Final yep. release. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And so now you're, you're moving on to another one of your favorite topics configuration. So this is not in a JSR at the moment, but it's something that you're exploring, the idea of a JSR for configuration. And uh, you had come to the executive committee to, to run some ideas uh, by us in the JCP, and uh, the suggestion was that you work a little bit more on this as an open mm. source project, right? So I think you uh, started an Apache project, is that right? Yeah. Basically, it was, it was out of the discussions we had we wanted to start a Java EE configuration, JSR. That was also that big survey done by Oracle, and configuration was one of the key topics, basically, that people wanted to see with, with EE8. And we failed, actually, to, do, to run that JSR, but mm -hmm. nevertheless, the people that were involved at that time said, let's continue with the initiative, let, we, we should not let it die, because it's an important cross-cutting concern. Everybody needs configuration, like logging, so go ahead with it, and that's why Tamaya as an Apache project then was, was, okay. was created. All right, Apache Tamaya. So you're going to share with us a little bit about it here so everybody can see it on the big screen, but um, you're going to be over in the early adopter area De definitely, later. Yes, yeah. Definitely, yes, yeah. definitely. Get a little bit more interaction. I'm, I'm so. not sure what you will see currently because uh, that's, that's the wrong one. This is the wrong one, yeah. Apache Tamaya. It should, be, it should switch, but... It should switch the... Our, okay. My system has some issues that I don't know. All right, well, I can... I see a blue screen. Is that it? A blue mosaic? No, it, it's blue. The, no? The blue one. Okay. Um, so I think... Are, are the other experts already over in the early adopter area sharing? Sebastian, Christian, Ivar, uh, over there. Basically, we, we, I would say we skipped the presentation, yeah? but just we can, we can tell about a few things okay. about it. Um, basically, what Tamaya offers is a unified API in Java, how you can okay. access configuration. That's the main stuff, main thing. And you can exchange and, and decide yourself what kind of backends you want to have. In, in, you can read ordinary property files, XML files, YAML, whatever. But you can also read stuff from ETCD servers or console and, and all the stuff. So we are, we are completely 
in a base position to, to write code, to write code against that, that configuration API, and you basically don't have to care about your backend. You can use it whatever makes use for the current, for the company okay. you work, for, for the integration, for the work, for the deployment, you, you yeah. decided to use something. That's the, the big advantage of it. Okay. And, and even we have full integration with CDI, so you can configure and inject configuration everywhere. And it works completely the same. There are the same annotations working similarly if you use it in SE mode with CDI or with OSGI with Spring or whatever. All right. So that's, that I would say that's a real benefit. But what, what's important for me is, um, or, or would be, we need more people that just looking at that stuff and, 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 and engaging with it, because if we have m more momentum with that, we may be able to start a JSR then. Right, so you find some commonality, lots of contributors there yeah. in the Tamaya project and decide what, what might need to be standardized in the future and then bring it to the JCP and file yeah. it. And I, I said most of the people wanted to so have something in the Java EE configuration area space. Mm -hmm. right. uh, in that space. So they should now ha help us to engage that we get more enough momentum to really create the not even a configuration chairs or on EB level, but one on for, for the whole Java ecosystem. Right, so very exciting stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm happy yeah. to hear an update from you. Look forward to hearing more about it in yeah. the coming months. Great to see you. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks, thanks you. All right, and well, I'll see you over there in the early adopter area. So thanks to all of my experts who came and shared with me what's going on in the JCP with your JSRs and things that you want to file as JSRs. So we'll be talking more throughout the week and getting more feedback from the community. So I hope everyone will join us over in the early adopter area today and tomorrow. Thanks.